Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a theory of motivation created by psychologist Abraham Maslow in 1943. At the top is self-actualization, preceded by esteem, then love, then safety, and finally, our physiological needs. Maslow hypothesized that in order to reach self-actualization, one must first complete the four preceding needs in the order that they come. Right now, humans think that we, as a society, have reached self-actualization. When in actuality, when we look across the entire Earth at places in the Middle East, South America, Africa, and even within the US, it is quite the opposite. We have so much potential to create and innovate, but we are holding ourselves back. We're holding ourselves back because we've built our lives off of expired technologies, values, ways of living, and the belief that we are okay. We currently live in a collapsing ecosystem with exponentially depleting resources that almost guarantees the demise of the future human population. And the worst part, we're refusing to change. We are preventing ourselves from reaching the peak of that pyramid. Why? Because we don't have this bottom most essential piece. We have not secured good, sustainable, healthy food. Food. We have this huge problem in our, earth, on our, in our world today with food. And it's mainly due to the fact that there are two polar opposite ends to the problem. On one side, we have one sixth of the Earth's population currently starving to death due to poor food distribution and food insecurity. For example, 78% of homes in Pakistan are currently food insecure. On the other side, we have two thirds of Americans being either obese or overweight, partly due to the types of food that they're eating. And the agriculture business model, the current agriculture business model means that there's an excess amount of food in most developed countries and a deficit in some developing ones. 20% of the 263 million tons of meat we produce each year goes to waste. That's 75 million cows gone. On top of that, it costs us 518 gallons of water to raise just one pound of chicken. To raise one pound of beef, that's 1,847 gallons of water. And global pollution doesn't look much better. Um, livestock and agriculture account for almost 21% of it. Cars, just a mere 14. The current forms of farming livestock uses an unsustainable amount of resources. The economic and environmental cost of converting grass into ground beef is now just as comparable to turning coal into electricity. And this problem is only growing. As the human population increases, the livestock population will increase exponentially. And this is just plainly unsustainable. But not for long. The solution? Lab cultured meats. So the basis of this technology has actually been around for thousands of years, and it's been used in yeast cultures for beer, bread, cheese, and yogurt. Basically, to create a piece of lab cultured meat, cells are extracted from the desired tissue of an animal, placed in a petri dish with growth medium. From there, it's put in a bioreactor that maintains the perfect growing environment and allows the cells to multiply into a, thi multiply into a thick layer of luscious tissue. The best part, since the cells are constantly regenerating inside an animal, the process can be done over and over and over again using that exact same animal. And the extent of this technology doesn't just stop at meat. Its broader term is cellul cellular agriculture, and that's because it can be used to create things like leather, silk, and even some dairy products like milk and eggs. As you can see, the possibilities are endless. Now, I know what you're all thinking. This must be incredibly expensive. And you'd be right, kind of. In 2013, the first lab culture beef burger cost $325,000. Just seven years later, in 2020, one pound of lab culture beef costs just $12. This price makes fresh, better sourced meats more accessible and affordable. We need to take the resources we expend to current agriculture methods and move them to growing meat in labs that can be virtually anywhere. Think of a brewery. It is these huge bioreactors that churn out yeast cultures and can be found in small towns or even the center of big cities. This could be the future livestock farm. Imagine, instead of beer being produced here, a six ounce Angus burger. By bringing food local through lab cultured meat makes it fresh, easy to access, and easy to transport. I'd like to compare the side effects of current agriculture to the side effects of possible future lab cultured meat. I'm going to bring back this slide from earlier. Currently, it takes us 1,847 gallons of water to raise one pound of beef, compared to the just mere 25 gallons it costs to raise one pound of lab cultured beef. 
we will also see a decrease in food waste because now we can choose, not only can we choose exactly how much we want, but we can choose exactly how much we need. And that's because the growth rate of a cell culture is a lot easier to control than the growth rate of a single cow. Lab culture meats also provides 96% less greenhouse gas emissions than current agriculture methods and uses 99% less land. Less overfarming and overfishing allows damaged ecosystems to regain equilibrium. Right now, we don't know what's being put in our foods. All the time, we hear about pesticides, hormones, preservatives, antibiotics. With lab cultured meats, not only can we see exactly what's being put in our foods, but we can also choose what we want to put in our foods. The process behind lab cultured meats allows us to add things like vitamins and supplements that we may be missing in our lives, on top of having clean, healthy meat. And for the animals, why are we raising such complex organisms to farm such simple tissues? Cows aren't made to be eaten. Their milk isn't made for humans. They shouldn't be made to live these lives of suffering. They should be considered a novelty. Here's the first lab culture beef burger. Now, humans naturally do not like change. You, the audience, and only you, not anyone else in the world, are the single biggest barrier to lab cultured meats becoming the next big thing. But you are also its biggest opportunity. This change isn't about us, it's about helping the next generation. If I was up here today, presenting a universal cure to cancer or Alzheimer's, you'd all be racing up here to take it from me. Well, here I am, doing the most I can as one person, presenting a cure so detrimental to, our to a problem in our society. And all I ask from you is that in a few years' time, when you're in the supermarket and see this lab cultured beef, you aren't skeptical of how cheap it is. Instead, you pick it up confidently, remembering this talk, and help catalyze the movement of change towards reaching self-actualization as a society. I believe in the power of education, and if we want to change the world, first, we have to change the way we eat. Thank you.